Welcome back to Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan, and today we'll be taking a look at From Beyond, 1986, the humanoid entity explored in detail. Science has given us many wonderful things, including the device that you're watching this on right now. Yes, scientists have experimented and found many new innovations, many of which have helped mankind progress. However, what happens when an experiment goes wrong? Well, usually the scientists will clean up the mess and try again, but if he can't, he's dead. From Beyond is a movie which was released in 1986 and falls into the body horror film genre. The film revolves around a crazy scientist who is obsessed with experimenting on how to activate the pineal gland that is inside the human brain. In an effort to do so, he and his loyal assistant Crawford managed to create an otherworldly scientific machine called the Pretorius Resonator, which unfortunately backfires on them. An accident occurs, the mad genius scientist dies, and all the blame falls on his assistant. So did he kill Dr. Pretorius, or was it something completely different? A movie of this sort has H.P. Lovecraft written all over it. And you would not be wrong in thinking that, since the movie was loosely based on a short story written by Lovecraft himself. Interestingly, the short story is only seven pages long, and another movie called Banshee Chapter was also based on it. The movie stars Jeffrey Combs, Barbara Crampton, Ken Forey, and Ted Soriel, and was written by Dennis Paoli, Stuart Gordon, and Brian Usna. So let's dive into this slimy world of Dr. Pretorius' nasty creation. Before we get into today's explanation, however, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, let's begin. <laughs> Humans are such easy prey from Beyond 1986. This movie is unlike anything you've ever seen before, so buckle up and strap in for one hell of a ride. From Beyond is essentially an experiment in bringing 1980s horror trends to their logical conclusion and seeing if the horror audience is prepared to follow despite whatever is thrown at them. The movie centers around Dr. Edward Pretorius and his assistant, Dr. Crawford Tillinghast, who are two scientists who have recently completed the invention of the Resonator, a machine that would allow them to see beyond the usual human range of perception. It works, demonstrating the existence of pink floating worm-like organisms that appear to have no interaction with our physical reality unless they notice movement, in which case they will bite chunks of our flesh off as what happens to Tillinghast. He wants to put a stop to it right then, but Pretorius is insanely power hungry and orders him to go through with it. Interesting to note here is that Dr. Pretorius is actually named after Dr. Henry Frankenstein's previous teacher, Dr. Septimus Pretorius, who seduced Henry to the dark side in the novel Frankenstein. Fortunately, during the mad experiment, the resonator malfunctions and shuts down, but not before leaving Pretorius decapitated. Tillinghast with only enough evidence to persuade the cops that he's a raving lunatic who murdered the older scientist without dropping a drop of blood. This is when things get interesting. Crawford, who was being held in a psychiatric facility, was due for evaluation to confirm that he was in fact crazy. But luckily for him, the psychiatrist who evaluated him believed his story. Dr. Catherine asks for a CAT scan to be done, and they soon find out that Crawford's pineal gland is much larger than a regular human being and is glowing. She decides that she wants to see it for herself. Catherine is played by Barbara Crampton, and studio executives were against Crampton being cast, because they believed that she was too young to play a psychologist. Gordon, on the other hand, was adamant about Crampton being cast. He had previously worked with both Crampton and Jeffrey Combs on Reanimator. He believed that having a company of actors while filming Lovecraft films would allow the actors to know ahead of time that they would be asked to do all sorts of weird things, allowing them to adapt effortlessly to his direction. Thus, Dr. Catherine, Crawford, and a police officer named Bubba end up at the house, waiting to become victims of the Resonator. They start the Resonator, and Crawford is successful in making the two of them see that he was right. You can see creatures with the help of the Resonator, but this time, he did not only see creatures, they saw Dr. Pretorius step out of the shadows, asking them to join him to see what he could see in the beyond. As he spoke to them, he slowly turned more and more into a slimy monster, resembling a squid-like creature. They realize that his consciousness has taken control of the creature that ate his brain. A panicked Crawford shuts down the resonator, making Pretorius and the creatures vanish. 
They also discover a sexual aspect of the stimulation of the pineal gland, which the movie plays on. While the incident shocks them, it also alters their brain. Stimulation causes a, an accompanying sexual stimulation. As Catherine wants to go back to the machine and see more, behaving like a maniac herself. When everyone sleeps that night, Catherine does go back and switches on the machine. But thankfully, Crawford and Bubba both wake up on time and notice that something's wrong. They go into the basement to shut down the source of power, but encounter a giant worm-like monster with razor-sharp teeth. They ultimately manage to defeat it and shut off the power. All of the worms and creatures and even violence is visual effects created. The production actually ran out of money before the effects for the finale could be completed, according to producer Brian Usna. The effects were generated by four different special effects teams, with John Carl Beckler creating the majority of special effects. Having two close calls with this machine, Bubba takes control of the situation and decides that they should leave before anything else can happen. But little does he know that Catherine is already under the spell of the machine. Catherine dresses up in a leather suit and gets on top of an unconscious Crawford, while Bubba readies their truck so that they could leave the Hell House. Funnily enough, the leather dominatrix attire worn by Barbara Crampton in the scene was actually sold at a yard sale. Barbara Crampton was questioned in 2016 by an interview if her teenage children had seen this or any of her early films. Crampton had responded that they had not, but that their friends had all seen it on the internet and it even taunted her son about the black leather costume in particular, finally prompting her to show him the films that she had made. Coming back to the movie though, Bubba comes back to see Catherine in her leather suit and forces her to come back to her senses when the resonator machine comes to life controlled by Pretorius from the beyond, and the bugs descend on Crawford and Catherine. Bubba manages to save them, losing his own life in the process. At this point, they see an extremely deformed version of the creature, and as they try switching off the machine, Crawford's pineal gland enlarges and pops out through his forehead. Seeing this, a shocked Catherine desperately tries to shut down the machine, and is successful using a fire extinguisher. They are rushed to the hospital, and their mental state is checked. However, the story doesn't end there. Turns out that Crawford now likes eating brains. And with that distracting the hospital staff, Catherine rushes to the house to destroy the machine with the help of a bomb. Seeing her run off, Crawford follows, and the climax takes place where it all started. And eerily enough, the address of the house is 666 Benevolent Street. There is a showdown between Pretorius and Crawford, where the former eats the latter, but Crawford's consciousness remains in the creature, and as their internal battle tears it apart, the bomb explodes, destroying it all, leaving behind only a traumatized Catherine. Like Roger Corman's adaptations of Edgar Allan Poe, Stuart Gordon was interested in the potential of developing a series of Lovecraft films with the same cast. So, in 1995, Gordon, Jeffrey Combs, and Barbara Crampton collaborated on a third Lovecraft adaptation, Castle Freak, a direct-to-video film. Gordon would go on to direct adaptations of two more of Lovecraft's writings, the film Dagon in 2001 and H.P. Lovecraft's Dreams in the Witch House, the second episode of the Masters of Horror television series in 2005. What are you going to do to me? I'm going to kiss you. Pretorious Creature explained, This movie is a vile exploitation film in which severe gore and bodily horror are inextricably linked to violent sexuality. In fact, Dr. Pretorius hammering a nail into an unwilling female's tongue is the first scene that was cut out, because it was simply just too much. The gnarly creature that Dr. Pretorius transforms into, after being eaten by it, and having his consciousness transferred into it is the main villain of this movie. And because of how gross and tough it is to look at, well, this one is definitely worth a mention. We do get a little bit of a backstory into who Dr. Pretorius was as a person, apart from the obvious scientific maniac angle. We see that he was into BDSM, and it was often non-consensual, which seems a little like the pleasure-pain dynamic that is there with Pinhead and the rest of the Cenobites from Hellraiser. When he does appear as the deformed monster that can change its bodily shape, he still talks about pleasure, saying that the greatest sensual pleasure in the world is to see inside another person's mind. The creature also takes a liking to the beautiful Dr. Catherine, 
and keeps trying to come in physical contact with her. This could be the reason why Catherine was affected by the resonator to such a degree, unlike both Bubba and Crawford when she was first exposed to the machine. Crawford also tells Bubba in a scene that Pretorius loved beautiful women. Having seen the backstory of this maniacal scientific genius, there is an increased understanding about the creature that he turns into. Pretorius from The Beyond is the true main character of the film, as everyone else spends the entire film reacting to him and his creation. After his transformation into the creature, he is shown as a horrible exaggeration of human lusts and cravings, both sexual and otherwise. Still, Gordon clearly understood that the sexual aspect will give us the most fright and catch the most attention, and they play on that immensely. They do so in the depiction of all aspects of the creature, starting with the worm's mouths that have a distinctly vagina with teeth design, along with the final form of the Pretorius monster, which looks like a slimy wrinkled phallus with a deformed human head. The physical appearance, as we have already noted, changes from one scene to the next, which means that it can shapeshift and change its biomass according to how it wants to present itself. However, what remains constant is that it is somewhat of a humanoid entity that has pinkish, wet, slime-like skin and transformed from a version that looks like Dr. Pretorius to a hunchbacked phallic creature with long tentacles and tendrils, which are also wet and slimy. It also has sharp teeth, along with having superhuman strength, and by the climax, we see the pineal gland emerge from its forehead, looking like a third eye, completing the alien-like look. We see the creature again and again, and the movie definitely makes use of the shock factor that the creature brings, looking worse with every progressing scene. With how horrifying the creature looks, it is not surprising that obtaining an R rating from the MPAA, according to Gordon, was quite a difficult task. He quoted them as saying that the first version of the picture had 10 times too much of everything when he first showed it to them. He was eventually able to get away with making some minor changes to the film, rather than eliminating full segments. It definitely looks like a Lovecraftian monster, with its tentacles and slimy body. However, the creature is not all-powerful, and ultimately gets destroyed by Crawford and the bombs planted by Catherine. There are things in our universe not meant for the eyes of mortals. Dismantle it, son. The Resonator, Miskatonic U, 2021. From Beyond was meant to be a part of a series of Lovecraftian horror movies, but it is only now getting a sequel, over two decades later. A new movie with a title like The Resonator, Miskatonic U, and a studio like Full Moon Films behind it, well, it's easy to assume that this is a sequel to Stuart Gordon's 1980s classic film From Beyond. The Resonator, Miskatonic U, has been combined into a 70-minute movie for release on DVD and Blu-ray. It was originally shot as two episodes of a postponed series for Full Moon streaming service. Crawford Tillinghast is the protagonist of this story, and he is attempting to duplicate and even perfect his late father's scientific experiments. So far, all it's gained him is a beheaded pal from the other side, brought into our reality by the Resonator. However, Tillinghast's situation becomes exasperated when he finds out that the prototype of his creation has not only released vicious and deadly monsters into his world, but has also altered his own reality. The Resonator unfolds with apparent expertise in storytelling and direction. All the important information is laid out in an entertaining manner that should ideally make both Lovecraft enthusiasts and devotees of From Beyond extremely happy and satisfied. As Crawford, Oliver gives a more nuanced performance than Combs' barely restrained megalomania. However, the fact that Oliver is a muscular redhead who bears little physical resemblance to Combs, well, he manages to channel his persona, even though it's more akin to the role that Combs played in Reanimator. College drama, mad scientists, and supernatural horror are intermingled with a heavy dose of TNA in William Butler's film. It's not the sequel to From Beyond that anyone expected, but considering the way that Charles Band has taken the company, the resonator, Miskatonic U, is probably what should have been expected. In any case, it might be for the best. It's a tall order to expect anyone to equal the work of a team like director Stuart Gordon and authors Brian Usna and Dennis Paoli. It probably was a sensible decision to take it in a completely new path. Story-wise, it serves as an extension as well as a remake of the film. The resonator device is, of course, the same. And the function of the resonator also remains the same, with it opening up a doorway into the beyond, giving us the same pinkish creatures that we saw in From Beyond. 
One of the main differences is that this movie takes the experiments in the hands of Crawford this time around, instead of Dr. Pretorius, and gives us something that is more current with the times in terms of college life and drama. The cast is quite excellent, and the special effects are fantastic. The soundtrack is also well done, and the whole thing is actually rather disturbing. It's classic Charles Band with a modern full moon twist, and it's worth seeing just for that. If you are interested in the world of the beyond, and want to know more about the creatures that exist in that paradigm, along with what exactly lures people into that world, making humans easy prey, then this movie will definitely pique your interest. Gordon, to whom Resonator is dedicated, I believe would have approved. It's obvious that it's a Lovecraft fan flick, and it ticks off most of the requirements. In a macabre manner, it is both weird and hilarious. The Resonator, Miskatonic U, is available to stream on Full Moon Streaming Service in two different versions. You can watch it as two distinct episodes or together as a complete feature film. On November 9th, 2021, it will be released on DVD and Blu-ray. For additional information about this film, you can visit Full Moon's website or their Facebook page. From Beyond Sequel, The Resonator, Miskatonic U, serves as the sequel to the body horror fantasy that is From Beyond. After over 20 years, the Lovecraftian universe that was explored by Stuart Gordon has finally gotten a comeback. While From Beyond did not do well at the box office when it was released, it has since then become somewhat of a cult classic. Stuart Gordon is definitely remembered by fans for his contribution to the horror genre, and that love can definitely be seen on screen in the first few frames of the film, where the production team dedicates the movie to Gordon. This sequel serves as a modern reimagining of the original film. It takes place on the fictional college campus of Miskatonic University in Arkham, Massachusetts, where all kinds of weird and otherworldly phenomenon have been reported in Lovecraft lore. This is one that fans will definitely appreciate, and it's not a bad watch at all. In fact, if you're into the horror genre in general, this movie should really catch your fancy. Both the movies have scenes that will make your face turn away, a universe that will excite you and make you wonder about the many possibilities and monsters that are dangerous and grim to look at. When it comes to body horror, these movies get it right. Both the movies have relatively simple special effects and visual effects that only adds to the grim and gory feel of the environment that the movies are trying to create. Before you go ahead and watch The Resonator Miskatonic U, well, make sure that you definitely watch From Beyond. From Beyond is the source material. It is the film that inspired this sequel, and you simply have to bear witness to Stuart Gordon's genius when it comes to visually impactful body horror, as he has demonstrated that he can do superbly all throughout his career. While the movie is quite old, don't let that fool you, because human greed for power and a quest for the unknown which is the central philosophical thought around both the movies, is something that is constant, no matter when you watch it. I mean, wouldn't you want to sample the resonator with all of its powers, at least once in your life? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For marvelous videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one, be safe, and thanks for watching. Welcome, my dear. Why?